So, you're designing something in your shop, and you need to actually, like, hold one to test it out, or make changes, or whatever. Typical prototyping. That's where I'm at right now. Clearly, 3D printing is the answer, but it's not exactly easy to get into. Print supports are a whole thing. Resins need to be calibrated. The parts always warp. Uh, you can't just take your CAD file, stick it in the thing, hit print, and get one, right? Well, you can, actually, with this thing. This is a Hay Gears Ultra Craft Reflex RS. A lot of word salad in these printers, I gotta tell you. It's a 10-inch printer, it's a little more industrial, and it's designed to, to resolve all of those annoying problems I just mentioned. It's supposedly faster, easier to use, uh, the prints are more accurate than anything out there. Uh, we'll see about that. I'm gonna walk you through some of those major problems that resin printing tends to have, and how this machine claims to overcome those. Then I'm gonna show you some of the rapid prototyping that I did uh, to, to test this machine out. Spoilers! It's something I need because of my goofy looking face. The printer is pretty awesome, uh, but there's a major catch and I'll get to that a bit later. Problem number one, supports. You can't just print any shape. Uh, they need to be supported and attached to the build plate, this thing. If you've looked online at some 3D files available, you might have noticed some of them come pre-supported. That means you don't just get the file of the thing, but somebody went in there and added the supports manually. Someone, presumably, who knew what they were doing. That is usually the case, though not always. But if you design the thing yourself, you don't have that option. Other slicers have like an automatic support function, and that mostly works, kinda. It works a lot better if you know how to do it yourself manually, so then you can go in and fix all the problems with the auto supports. It's, so it's not really auto, it's, it, it gets you most of the way there. This machine is different. It comes with its own dedicated software and the auto supports are amazing. I cannot believe how well they work. I even tried printing like a highly detailed model with little, little tiny bits and this comes pre-supported. I printed one pre-supported and I printed one with auto supports. And you know, I think the auto supports look better. That's right, auto supports actually win. If you're a nerd and want to know uh, how they did that, you aren't alone. I asked them about it and they said basically it uses a variable exposure time. So most of these prints when you, when you put it into the machine, it will slice it into layers and it will expose each layer in a certain pattern. That's how it builds. Each layer gets the same amount of exposure time. This machine does not do that. It exposes the support material a little bit more. Obviously, this only works for the auto supports, not pre-supported things. But that means the supports, because they're exposed more, they're stronger. So they can be made smaller. Smaller supports means less junk sticking out of the thing you actually want to print. And I've noticed they break off much easier because they're smaller and they're a little bit stiffer. Plus, when they break off, you get like little nubs sticking out. Those little bumps can be shaved or or just chipped off with your with your fingernail. It's pretty nice. I don't tend to be very careful removing some. Supports. I tend to do the, the gorilla method, grab and yank. Some of the auto-supported things that I've done in the past, because I'm not particularly careful, they tend not, not to just leave little nubs, but kind of divots, big divots that you might have to fill in if you actually care about how it looks. Or very, very delicate things like these little wing feathers will just rip straight off. So it takes a long time sitting there with clippers and all that. I didn't do that with anything on this printer. I'm sorry to start with like a whole bunch of minutes talking about something minor like support material, but it isn't minor. It totally simplifies a major step that I don't like to do. I can actually just click auto everything and it does a good job. Problem two, warping and deforming prints. Anyone who's printed a bunch of stuff knows that uh, the dimensional accuracy is not real great. Prints tend to warp or stretch. They kind of deform a bit. Uh, and there's, there are ways that you can sort of mitigate this if you're really careful with calibration, but it, it's just kind of a thing. Resin warps. And that's kind of a problem if you're trying to prototype something, like I've been doing. You kind of want your test articles to actually match the design. That isn't a problem with this printer. The software can supposedly anticipate and compensate when it's making the files, plus this machine is just loaded with sensors up the wazoo. It's got four sensors everywhere, peel sensors, uh, and as it's going, it will monitor what's what it's reading and it will make adjustments. And you can see those adjustments on the screen. It'll tell you how much time is left. That'll change slightly as it's making updates in real time. It's really kind of neat. Plus, if something falls in there and you don't know, like a fly, that always seems to happen when I leave the lids open, and the thing starts going down, it will sense it and say, hey, something's in the vat. It will know. If the thing gets bumped while it's running, it will know. If you're stupid and you forget to, to tighten these screws down after dumping out some resin, it will know that it's not peeling off properly. It's kind of neat. I wonder if it knows I'm wearing a dirty shirt right now. Who knows? So what does that mean to you? That means you don't need pre-supported 3D files, uh, and you can be reasonably sure whatever you print will match the file, both in dimension and shape. If you have multiple pieces, they will probably fit together. You don't have to worry about it. These are a couple of large thin things that you print separate and stick them together. Here's a close-up of some I did on another printer. 
I don't remember which printer I did this on. I made this like a year ago and you got to glue them together. I uh, see that gap. I had to attack these things with a hobby knife and they still don't fit perfectly. And here are some printed on the Reflex RS. Those little nubs and, and holes actually fit. I didn't have to touch this at all with the hobby knife. And, uh, and they look good. Like it's not a perfect machine fit, but look at the side by side comparison. This is without any time messing with the settings or any shaving with a knife, nothing straight off the printer. These files do come pre-supported, but I use the unsupported versions for the ones I printed on the Reflex RS and I made the software do it. Problem three resin settings. That brings me to the last issue I want to rant about, and that's setting up a resin. So resins, bottle to bottle, they're not always the same, and you tend to have to, to calibrate them. It's a decent skill to have, but it is kind of annoying. With most printers, there are so many settings to mess with. Uh, to be honest, I mess with like three or four of them, get it pretty good, and then just keep using that resin. And every three or four prints, I do, it, I do throw in another little test print because I have to keep kind of adjusting over time. This printer requires none of that. In the program, you pick the printer, you pick the resin, I'm doing this, I want this kind of detail, and that's it. The machine does everything else. And the prints come out more crisp than anything I've ever seen on another resin printer. It is pretty crazy. This printer supposedly doesn't even have the greatest resolution of everything. Like it's in the ballpark to everyone else's printers and resolution, printers resolutions are all good enough, but these come out ultra crisp and it's probably not just because of the resolution. It's probably the resin and the settings and how everything just automatically dials in for you. Now I say you don't have to mess with settings. What I mean is you can't mess with settings. You don't need to know how resin printing works. You can just click and drag, click a couple of things, hit print and it does it. What is the catch here? Well, this is a locked down system. That means you have to use their software, which is excellent, their resins and their machines. You can't go buy another bottle of someone else's resin you want to try out and put it in this machine. I mean, you can pour it in there, but you can't adjust any settings on the software to make it work. So probably not going to work super well. Some people really don't like that. I initially did not like that until I tried it out. After trying it out, I no longer worry about it. Here's why. The software, the machine, all of its sensors, the properties of the resin, all of it works together to give you the best quality prints with you not having to mess with anything. And the thing is, actually, it does work better and it is easier. If you throw in a bunch of different resins that they don't know about, then you're going to have to go back to changing all of the settings yourself. The machine might not be calibrated for it. So if you want a 3D printer to make things, this is a great printer for you. If you want a 3D printer because 3D printing is your hobby and you like screwing with it, this one's probably not for you. These resins, to be honest, are as crisp and detailed as anything I've ever tried, probably among the best. And this prototyping stuff is definitely on par with the toughest of the ABS-like tough resins that I've tried. It's kind of neat that they've, they've managed to do that. You're, you're locked into their resin and their software and stuff, but their resin and software is really good. So that's, that's nice. It's not even that super expensive. Like this is prototyping resin, both of these are, and they sell the prototyping stuff, I think it's 45 bucks a bottle. The only difference is the color. This is pale purple, 45 bucks a bottle, right? It comes in a neat auto filling bottle that fills the, the tank and all that. They also sell a standard modeling resin, which comes in a normal bottle, just like, you know, a cylinder bottle without the cool topper on it. That's like 33 bucks, I think, a bottle. And the difference between these, besides the price and the bottle, is nothing. Price, bottle, end of list. So you can actually buy this, this resin for 33 bucks a bottle, which is on par with most other resins. And it's really good stuff. They also have tons of other kinds of resin. I'm just talking the prototyping stuff because that's what I'm doing. So how does that actually work? Here's the prototyping issue that I'm working on. I have a goofy shaped face. Yep, respirators don't fit. I've mentioned this before. Uh, I really prefer not dying of toxic fumes and smoke and all that. Uh, so I've had to use something called a resp o -rater. It's a scuba mouthpiece. It's got filters around and it works but it makes me breathe through my mouth and that's not comfortable. Uh, they're not available anymore anyway. It doesn't seem like you can get them. So that's a problem. I've tried making my own respirator in the past and I ran into some issues. What I would like to do is to find a way to get the one-way valves that come on the normal 3M mask that doesn't fit me, integrate those into a mask that does fit me. That way I can get easy to find rubber one-way valves, rubber filters, rubber gaskets from a company that isn't going to go under and I can just buy a pack of everything I need if I need to replace them. But I don't have those in a design 3D model thing and I don't have a way to stick it on my face. That's where the prototyping comes in. There's two different kind of one-way valves and a gasket for the filter. I have a 3D model for the filter mount, but none of the other stuff. One-way valve number one here has a hole in the middle. I downloaded a generic part off the internet somewhere, printed it off, and guess what? It didn't fit. Adjustment, make it bigger, try again. It almost fits. New part modeled from scratch using new dimensions and bingo! Looks like it fits just fine. Now I can mount that valve. Other valve 
has a little little bump, a nub in the middle, and that mounts it to the thing. It appears to be the same diameter as the other valve, but I don't know what size hole that's supposed to go into. I 3D modeled up a plate with holes ranging from one millimeter to five millimeters in size with quarter millimeter differences between them. Print that out and test it out. Looks like 4.5 millimeters is the right mix of not too tight, not too loose. Add a hole to the other valve body design and looks like it works. Now I should print both of them on one thing and see if it works as expected. Uh, it was surprisingly difficult getting the valves to like fit in there because they're kind of down a little a little hole. That's something I may not have known if I hadn't printed one out and actually like looked at the thing. I'll keep that in mind. They have to be easy to get in. They have to be easy to get out in case I have to change them in the future. And this, this is why you need to print stuff in the real world. If I sound a little upset, it's because I spend all day fixing machines where it's clear someone designed these parts blown up on a TV screen and never actually held one in their hands. Yes, that fits and there's plenty of space around it blown up on your giant TV screen with all the other components on the CAD program hidden so they're not in the way. Look, engineers, print one out and look at it. Okay, okay, moving on. I have a frame that fits, that's scanned to my face and adjusted so that I can move around and it's comfortable. I have a shell that looks kind of cool. It's kind of low poly looking. It's not a stylistic choice. I just didn't feel like making it more complicated than that. And I have these files for these other mounts. Okay, simple, boolean the stuff together and print it out. And here it is. So this is a little bit too big to fit on the printer. I ended up cutting off a couple of little corners, uh, but it's, it's, it's a prototype. It doesn't have to be perfect. The mask barely fits into the wash station. This is a really neat wash, wash station that does like a little dance, sloshing everything around. It's, it's kind of fun to watch. It's the only machine I've seen that does this. And it's got a two bucket thing with valves so you can drain into another bucket. You never actually have to touch like a lot of, a lot of alcohol. That's kind of neat. But really the main thing I like about it is it's not a wire mesh sitting in a larger bucket, which means if you have tiny, tiny, tiny pieces like these little nuts and you put them in the, in the thing, they don't get around the mesh and get lost in the bottom of the bucket forever. That is the best feature of this. I don't care about the dancing around. I don't care about the separate buckets. You will not lose tiny parts in this, and that is amazing. This mask also barely fits in the cure station. This is probably the coolest cure station I've seen because the door opens on the front. It doesn't open in the top. If I have something on top, I can still get the door open. It's not a big shell I have to move around. And the inside of this thing is lined with reflective material. Why doesn't anyone else do that? I, it, it makes sense to me. And you can get really cool camera shots through the door if you turn all the lights off. So did this pay off? Well, the one-way valves fit perfectly on there. And thankfully I put them in an area that I can actually get to quite easily. The filters too, the, the seals, the gaskets fit on there and the filters snap in. I didn't care to make sure that they were oriented the right way when I made the model, but yeah, it's prototyping. I can do that later. The big problem though, I forgot to seal up between this inner frame and the openings of the eye holes. So as I'm breathing, I get a little bit of leakage drying out my eyes. That's not ideal, but it's that that's why we prototype. I also don't have the little loops for the straps to put it on because they would probably go here where the printer cut it off. Um, but overall, this was very useful. So now I have a 3D file that I can use for these one-way valves in this project and other projects in the future. That's really cool. What I really like too, this resin, I printed this thin enough so that the light is going through it but it's strong enough that they don't actually break off. So I put these on and off a bunch of times. You know, I even kind of fumbled it there and you might've heard a grinding noise. Uh, and the tabs aren't broken and the resin isn't cracked. That's looking a little wore out. That is quite surprising. How tough is it anyway? Well, I'm hitting that mount on my table here, dent in the wood and it's not broken. So uh, the resin's tough enough. That's, that's how tough it is. So. Standard 3D printer question, who is this machine for? If you're trying to rapid prototype stuff, this is great. If you want a lot of detailed stuff, this is great. If you make your own files and you don't have anything pre-supported, this will do it for you. If you want to produce a bunch of stuff with really high quality uh, resin, uh, again, this is pretty good. The software, I didn't go into this, but if you have a team of a bunch of people working in like an office, the software works really well. It's like an integrated thing. Um, I'm just one guy, so I didn't go into it too much. So would I snap my fingers and replace all my resin printers with this thing? Probably not. There's two reasons. One, it isn't big enough. I'm, I'm a weirdo. 10 inch, a 10 inch printer is big enough for pretty much everybody doing resin printed stuff. But until they make these things big enough to print like a freaking car in it, I'm probably gonna want it bigger. Second issue, 
the resin selection. They have a lot of resins available for this machine, but they don't have a casting resin. Now, Hay Gears does have a casting resin, and I asked them about it, and they said it's probably not going to be compatible with this machine because the light source in this has a slightly different wavelength. They have another printer, the wavelength is different. That works well with the casting resin. Again, that doesn't apply to most people out there, but half of the stuff I print is for metal casting. It's a burnout resin. It seems to fit their policy of if it doesn't work perfectly, they won't let you do it. I can kind of see where they're coming from there. If their burnout resin is as good as the rest of their resins, I would be excited to try it. But if I could have two printers in my garage, this would definitely be the second one. That being said, if you don't do metal casting, and if you don't need ridiculously gigantic things like me, this is probably the easiest to use printer out there. You literally just drop the file in the thing, click print, it does it all for you. The print quality is top notch. The software is hands down the best software I've ever used for 3D printing. And if you're interested, there's a link down below. They are on deep pre-sale right now. So if you watch this video within the first week or so after publication, which most of you will, click down below, you can get a pretty huge discount. But I think it's only that way for about another week. So uh, get moving, happy prototyping.